Chances are you're curious about building wealth through real estate and specifically how rental properties can supplement or maybe even replace your income. So you can punch that boss in the face and say, you jerk face, I don't need you anymore. Today I'm going to share with you why getting your second rental property is such a pivotal moment that can catapult you on your path to creating financial freedom for yourself and your family. Whether you're just starting out or already just a few properties in and have a few under your belt, understanding this turning point could be the key to accelerating your real estate journey. I'm going to break down nine significant insights as to why real estate is such a powerful wealth building vehicle. So let's dive in. Let's start with the first rental. For many, the first property is absolutely the hardest. It's overwhelming, it's stressful, and it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get there because you don't know what you're doing yet. You're likely saving up some cash. Every dollar you can is being put away into a savings account. You're maybe cutting back on some expenses to make room for savings. Or maybe even taking on a second job or a side hustle to scrape together enough extra income for you to put that down payment down. And because it's your first time, everything feels uncertain. You're new to the whole thing. You're navigating completely uncharted territories, dealing with the stress of the unknown, and it can feel like you're just climbing this insurmountable mountain when you're first getting started. But here's the thing, getting that first property is crucial. It's your gateway into the world of real estate investing. Once you're crossed that hurdle, you start to understand how the business works. You now have the proof that buying a rental property is a reality. It's a real thing. You're now official. You're a bona fide investor. And for many, once you get the first rent check in, you're hooked. When I got my first rent check in, I thought, man, this is the ticket right here. So why is the second property so significant? Well, simply put, it's the turning point where everything starts to get a little bit easier. Once you've had that first property, it's likely generating some passive income, maybe a few hundred dollars a month. Now, when you go for the second property, now you're not starting from scratch anymore. You already have the extra income stream from your first property, which can help you save faster and make the next down payment just a little bit easier to handle. Let's break it down with some numbers. So let's say your first property brings in about 250 bucks a month in passive income. When you buy your second property, it also generates 250 bucks a month. Now you have $500 extra coming in every month, completely passive. And this is where the magic of real estate starts to really unfold. That second property not only doubles your passive income, but also gives you a degree of financial leverage that you didn't have before. You now have more cash flow to save for the next property. It just starts to compound. You can reinvest and even start paying down the debt faster if you want to. I've worked with clients who took them several years to get their first property under their belt. It was a long, grueling process of saving and learning and overcoming all the initial obstacles. But once they got that first property, the second one came a little bit faster. Now maybe it only took one year instead of the several years before. Then the third property took, say, maybe six months to buy. And after that, the fourth and fifth properties came within a quarter. Why? Because each additional property added more passive income, which accelerated their entire process. And this is the power of compounding in real estate and how it actually happens when you buy rental properties. You've probably heard of compounding interest in the context of savings accounts or investments. Well, compounding also works in real estate as well. The more properties you have, the faster you can grow that portfolio because now each property contributes to the overall global cash flow. As you add more properties, your income grows exponentially. And that's why you often see successful real estate investors with 10, 20, 30, 50, maybe even 100 properties in their portfolio. They didn't start with that many to begin with, of course, they built up gradually using the income from their existing properties to then fund the next properties. After your second property, you start to notice a shift in your cash flows. Not only is your cash flow increasing, but your mindset changes as well. You begin to realize that the tenants are essentially paying off your mortgage for you. They're covering your operating expenses, they're covering your debt, and whatever is left over is pure profit that goes in your pocket. Plus, as your properties appreciate in value, you're building significant equity, which is how you build real wealth in real estate. And in this way, your net worth is increasing without you having to do that much extra. What's interesting is how your mindset evolves after getting the second property. Now you feel like you're a legitimate investor, like, I'm real. Initially, it's all about scraping together enough money, but as you start to see the returns, your confidence grows. You become more strategic in your investments, and you know what to look for in a property. You learn what areas and neighborhoods are promising, and how to crunch the numbers becomes just kind of 
commonplace for you because you know what to look for now. You also start to understand the different financing options that are available to you, like refinancing to pull out equity, which you can then use to buy more properties. You're leveraging up. Then you realize that you don't have to stick with single family. You can buy a duplex, a sixplex, maybe even a 12 unit. Sometimes folks use the equity from their initial properties to then buy the next property, allowing them to lever themselves up and grow their portfolio even faster. After I bought my second property, I noticed that I was getting on people's radar. People started contacting me and saying, would you buy my property? I started receiving more deal flow. Opportunities were coming to me because I had established myself in the marketplace. People were aware that I was a buyer. I wasn't just looking for properties anymore. Properties were now starting to find me. That's an absolute game changer because it opens up even more possibilities. You don't have to work so hard to find each next property. Then you start thinking even more creatively, like exploring subject to the existing loan or using owner financing, which is our favorite way to buy properties. And as you start to grow this portfolio, you'll naturally start to think outside the box. The traditional methods of buying and renting properties work, but they're just the beginning. For example, some investors have found success in niches like Airbnb or short-term rentals or tiny homes. Even in expensive markets where a traditional rental doesn't work as well, doesn't cash flow, there are alternative strategies that can create a lot more income, offer amazing tax advantages, and actually create better returns. We have a client who lives and operates in Southern California, which we all know is an incredibly expensive market. The home prices are sky high, and traditional rentals just don't cash flow very well there, if at all. But he found in a niche a strategy by converting rundown motels into multifamily properties and is therefore creating nearly a million dollars in equity every time he does the strategy. And that's in a market where it seemed impossible to make the numbers work at all. But by thinking creatively, getting some experience, he turned a challenging situation into a super profitable one. Another strategy that becomes even more viable as you gain experience is partnering with others. You don't always need to have all the money yourself. There are plenty of people out there who have money, but they don't have the time or expertise to invest in real estate themselves. So you could find deals, you could do the legwork, and then partner with somebody else and split the profits with them. It's a true win-win situation. You get access to capital and they get a return on their investment without having to manage the property themselves. I work with investors who are high income earners but don't have time to find and manage the properties because they're so busy. By partnering with me, we can leverage their financial resources to grow a portfolio even faster. And this is where networking and building relationships within the real estate community pays huge dividends. One of the biggest misconceptions about real estate investing is that you need a ton of savings to get started. While having savings and some cash at hand helps, the reality is that finding the right deal is probably more important than having all the money up front. Deals are probably the hardest part of this business, not the money. Once you start sourcing deals, whether it's a long-term rental, short-term, Airbnb, multifamily, or something else, you'll find that the money often follows especially once you've established a track record and can demonstrate a pattern of success. Investors are always looking for good deals, and if you can bring a deal to the table, you'll have no trouble finding funds to close on a really good deal. When I started, I thought the biggest hurdle would be saving enough money to get started. But as I got more into real estate, I realized that the real challenge was finding really good deals. And once you learn how to do that, your options really open up you start to see opportunities kind of at every turn. And that's when things really start to accelerate. Another powerful tool in your real estate arsenal is refinancing. As your properties appreciate, they build equity. This equity is often trapped in the property, but through cash out refinances, you can pull that equity out and use it to buy a lot more properties. The best part, a cash out refinance is considered tax free because it's debt and not income. This means that you can use the funds to expand your portfolio and not trigger a tax event. For example, my personal property is almost entirely paid off, so I opened up a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, and now at a moment's notice, I can pull 100K out from my HELOC. I can use that as a down payment on a property. Then, after a few years, I can refinance the property pay off my HELOC. And this process of unlocking trapped equity is a key strategy for scaling up your real estate business. To wrap it all up, getting the second rental property is the start of a snowball effect that can exponentially grow your wealth. The first property is always the hardest, but once you get past that initial hurdle, things start to get much easier. Your passive income increases, your knowledge and experience grow, and your confidence builds. You're like, I'm, I'm legit, I know what I'm doing. Before you know it, you're adding properties to your portfolio at a faster and faster pace. So if you're sitting there saving up for your first or second rental and feeling like uh, it's taking forever, don't get discouraged, it's the process. The process is slow at first. 
But once you have these two properties under your belt, you'll find that everything starts to kind of fall into a place and start to accelerate. Your net worth will start to skyrocket and you'll be well on your way to financial freedom through real estate investing. So if you're ready to take the plunge, we've got a five day challenge to get you started with commercial real estate investing. Check out the link in the description and start your journey today. And to continue your learning process, I've got a video that I think will really help you right here.